الحمد لله نحمده ونشكره نستعين به جل وعلا ونستهديه ونستغفره نعوذ به سبحانه وتعالى من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا عباد الله أنصحكم ونفسي الآثمة بتقوى الله أحثكم وإياها على طاعته أحذركم وإياها وبال مخالفته ومعصيته أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمدا صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وخليله أرسله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله ولو كره الكافرون اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمين وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين وارض اللهم عن صحابته أجمعين وعن معهم برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين أما بعد يقول الله سبحانه وتعالى في المحكم بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وإذ قال ربك للملائكة إني جاعل في الأرض خليفة قالوا أتجعل فيها من يفسد فيها ويسفك الدماء ونحن نسبح بحمدك ونقدس لك قال إني أعلم ما لا تعلمون the ayat are in Surah Al-Baqarah and they are known to many most of you or all of you where Allah Jalla Jalaluhu is saying which means Allah told the Malaika إذ قال ربك للملائكة إني جاعل في الأرض خليفة I am appointing someone on earth I am leaving putting some people on earth human beings are going to be on earth يعني تفسير we talked about this some other term تفسير of the ayah here خليفة is it going to be basically it's going to be on earth not going to be the malaika it's going to be humans insan بشر الملائكة's response was immediate قالوا they're telling Allah سبحانه وتعالى قالوا أتجعل فيها من يفسد فيها ويسفك الدماء are you going to put on this earth those who do fasad, corruption, and they shed blood. Allah said, "Qala inni a'lamu ma la ta'lamun." I know what you do not know. But let's stop here at the ayah with the malaika, as if the malaika are giving a CV of the human life, fasad and bloodshed. أتجعل فيها من يفسد فيها ويسفك الدماء. They didn't say anything else. They said these two things. Compared to us, ونحن we الملائكة يعني they're talking about themselves to Allah سبحانه وتعالى. ونحن نسبح بحمدك ونقد. We make تسبيح and we make all these عبادة and worship to you. We do not sin. قال إني أعلم ما تعلمون. I know what you do not know. Because it seems like corruption, fasad, and bloodshed is synonymous with many human traits. Therefore, Al Islam came. Therefore, Nuh came. Therefore, Musa came. Therefore, Isa came. Therefore, Idris came. Therefore, Al Anbiya, all of them came. Yet, that did not stop Habil and Qabil, the sons of Adam. Habil and Qabil. Qabil killed his own brother Habil. Fasad and corruption, notice. And bloodshed. Why? Disagreement over something. Jealousy. Qabil is the qatil, the killer. Qaf, Qabil. And then he killed his brother. You, you can go through history and you see how people... We often talk about how glorious the Ottoman Empire was. And there are many good aspects about it, there's no doubt. There's no doubt. But I would like you, when you go and visit Istanbul, go to the royal graveyard. And if you go to the royal graveyard in Istanbul, you'll see big graves with big, even, even in the graves, they, 
The ones who are on different levels, they have different kind of levels on the graving. Subhanallah. Hmm? No, the grave is not what appears on it. What's going on inside is the problem. You see the Sultan has a big grave. And then you see also royal graves, very tiny graves. And when you ask people there, who are these? They will tell you those were the children of the Sultan. He killed them so they don't become kings or they don't kill him so they can become kings. Huh? Now you... Or some other one would kill his brother. They started killing his brother because, you know, transient. Because since now the ruling and the chair becomes a matter of inheritance, and the chair is so important for that power, then they were willing to kill their brothers. So you see one sultan killing the other sultan. I'm not saying all of them. Huh? Remember, we don't talk definite. Yani we don't talk definitive and conclusive. We're talking about things have positive things and, and negative things. Now, but you see the brother killing the brother for the chair, and then not only that, you see now the father killing the, his sons. Ajib, how can you do that? But you see little graves, royal graves. Visit them and you see them. They're little royal graves. Young children were killed simply so they don't reach the, the age where they can aspire to get the power. But if that tells us anything, it tells us how far is the human being willing to go to achieve what is so perceived as power or influence or money, how much? Most of the crimes nowadays when you talk, about, talk to sociologists, they tell you most of the crimes committed in the world are based on money. People kill for money. They go to, they're willing to risk going to jail for money. They cheat for money. They lie for money. They're willing to abolish every single moral ethics they have so they can get more money. What more than that? They're willing to exchange Jannah for Jahannam for money. No problem. No problem. The book and the Sunnah becomes a theoretical thing. Now, believe in the book and the Sunnah. But the problem is when we say we are Ahl Sunnah, then Ahl Sunnah means those who follow the Sunnah. But how can you call yourself the people of the Sunnah and you always negate the Sunnah? Doesn't work this way. Because then it becomes a geopolitical term. Does not become a reality. Versus it's supposed to be what? A reality. That people who prioritize the book and the Sunnah. But if it becomes then just simply a banner or a label that's empty, therefore the salah, there is salah, but the salah is empty of its core. It's empty, it's void from its soul. There is siyam, but the siyam is simply ritual abstaining from food and drinks. It's not really educating the self that you should not lie then, you should not steal then, you should be merciful to your fellow brother, you should be merciful to the entire human race, you should be merciful to the plants and to the birds that fly over you. If Siyam does not teach you that, then what kind of Siyam then are we having? And therefore you see now the hadith of Rasulullah